Hey, what's going on everybody, Merm here, and today I'm going to bring you guys a review of the Fallout 4 Automatron DLC. This DLC was released on March 22nd, 2016 on all uh, platforms, and uh, basically this was the first add-on for Fallout 4. Um, now, if you've seen the past of my channel, you know that I wasn't the biggest fanboy of Fallout 4. In general, I'm actually quite a Fallout fanboy. I've loved every single Fallout game that I've played, which is Fallout 2, 3, New Vegas, and uh, part of 1. So, uh, you know, I'm a pretty big Fallout fan, and in the games I haven't played, I've actually, you know, watched Let's Plays and stuff like that. Of I just haven't been able to uh, play them yet, even though I would really like to, except for Brotherhood of Steel. I heard that was pretty terrible, but I'd still like to try it anyway. Anyway, uh, getting to the actual point of this, uh, I thought I'd talk about what are my thoughts on Fallout for Automatron DLC. Overall, if I had to give a general opinion of it, I'd say that it was a pretty good DLC. If you were to rank it among my favorites, my favorite being Lonesome Road, second favorite Dead Money, third favorite Old World Blues, uh, no, no, third favorite is Point Lookout, fourth favorite Old, Old World Blues, I'd probably put this right below Old World Blues. I don't really count Broken Steel as an add-on, although Broken Steel is very good. I don't really count it as an add-on, though, because it was pretty much the main campaign. But uh, I would also say that Broken Steel was a great DLC. I just, I can't really, it, I can't really uh, group it in with the other ones just because it was pretty much just a continuation of the story mode, so... It, you know, can't, it's hard to group in. And in some ways, this is a little... This DLC is similar to Broken Steel in that it actually doesn't add any new areas. Uh, it doesn't take you to a new place for this DLC. And that's going to take me to my biggest problem is that there's really no new... You don't feel like you're in a new place playing this DLC. You still are in the Commonwealth. You still feel like you're in the Commonwealth. And in some cases you actually visit places that you've already visited like in this here I think you can already visit this place from the start of the game because I believe it's that I, I had already cleared it on my first character so it's like what what's the point of all this you know what I mean it's like really in my opinion a DLC a Fallout DLC should take you to a new place you've never been to Broken Steel was different because it added a huge ton of content onto the end of the campaign it raised the level cap by 10 it did a lot of cool stuff so broken steel is really a different beast than this because this doesn't really add on to the main campaign it's a dlc but you know it, it's add-on content that you don't need to do to complete the game in theory you do, in theory you know you do need to complete broken steel to beat the campaign of uh, fallout 3 if you have it downloaded this you do not but it, it's still in the Commonwealth, so I think it's really disappointing to me. I was really hoping to uh, research or uh, go to a cool new area with the announcement of this DLC. I, I went into this completely blind, uh, as I always do. Same with Fallout 4. Um, I like to go into these games completely blind. Same with Dark Souls 3. Um, I haven't looked at anything with Dark Souls 3, so uh, because I find it more enjoyable to do that. So when I heard that it was Automatron, I thought we were going to go to some cool robot city and overrun by robots or something like that. All I heard was the name. Um, but that's really just pointing to me uh, that it's really just the Commonwealth and there I think it adds one or two new buildings to it and that's it I don't even know if it does that the buildings may have been there I just never explored them but uh, from my best estimate I would say that they're new buildings but I don't really know if that's true or not so really disappointing to me honestly uh, so that was one big negative the second big negative I have with the game or with the DLC rather is that um, like I said it it doesn't add any new areas and it doesn't add any really crazy new weapons and here's what I mean like it just it doesn't add a lot in that there isn't really a ton of content here and this kinda goes along with point one but it's really different it doesn't add a lot of new content it doesn't add a lot of new weapons the quest isn't really that long in particular it doesn't add new areas to explore so it's kind of they kinda go hand in hand you don't go to a new place so you have less new stuff to explore, so you have less new weapons to get, so it's a shorter DLC, and it's kind of a whole big issue for me. Um, these are those are my two, like, kind of, they're interconnected, it's really just one big issue, but uh, they're sort of separate in my opinion. So those are my two main issues when it comes to Fallout 4's DLC, because really there are a couple of new weapons. You have the Tesla rifle, the buzzsaw axe, the... Um, Mr. Gutsy Buzzsaw Axe and the Assaultron Blade and the Assaultron Helmet, which 
for all intents and purposes, the the Assaultron Blade, the Buzzsaw Axe, are pretty cool from what I've seen. The Assaultron Head is a really cool weapon. It has like a unique, it's sort of like the laser crank musket thing, but it's a, it has a different spin on it. It's pretty cool. And the um, the Tesla coil, the Tesla rifle is really, honestly, for me, it was cool, but it kind of just wasn't that good. I upgraded it fully, and I really still wasn't doing that much damage with it, even though my character is focused on energy weapons, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it wasn't specced correctly because the leveling system is fucked in this game, but I just didn't find the weapon to be that good, honestly. Um... Uh, I never got to use the and the other weapons because my character wasn't a melee build, and I just never used the Assaultron helmet. So um, I'm actually gonna do another playthrough and do a spoiler-filled review. This is spoiler-free, um, and that'll be coming uh, either tomorrow or the next day. So and I'll and that character is going to have uh, be have access to more weapons and stuff like that. So anyway, let's continue on with this. So what are the good things that this DLC added? Well, I think the robot workbench was uh, masterfully crafted. In comparison to the armor crafting and the weapon crafting and the meal crafting in this game, uh, they're shit compared to the, the robot workbench here. Really, the main problems I had with the armor crafting, well, mainly the weapon crafting. The armor crafting had a little bit of variation, where it was like, all right, I want to do this specific thing, so I'm going to build my armor or my weapon to that endpoint. So it's hard to explain what I mean, but it's like basically with weapons, it was always you would upgrade it down the same path, really. You know, you would always go down, at the end of the day, you either chose really between automatic and, and single fire. Really not that exciting stuff. Uh, and it pretty much got the same purpose done anyway, so it really wasn't that uh, unique in any way, if you ask me honestly. In, m in most situations, it was really just automatic versus single fire. In the armor, it was a little better. It was like, okay, well, I want the shadow armor, or I want this that increases the damage resistance, or I want this that increases the rad res or whatever. It was a little better there. Here, it's very, it's uh, significantly better, still not as good as it could be. I know I'm not explaining this too well, but I mean, like, it's not specialized in the in the main game. It really wasn't that specialized with the weapon and armor crafting. Usually, you went down the same line with every weapon, and that's it, really. It was all pretty much the basic stuff. They really, there wasn't much differences between the fully upgraded weapons of each category. On the robot crafting, it does, because each different robot set that is in the game comes with different advantages and disadvantages, so it's very specialized in that way. You can craft a really fast robot and give it the thrusters of a Mr. Gutsy or Mr. Handy, but it's not going to have as much defense, it's not going to have much carry weight. Or you can craft a big sentry bot, but it's going to have trouble moving through tight corridors. So it's really cool, uh, and it has a couple other problems, but I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. So it's really cool how that works, where it's like you can specialize your robot in certain ways for certain situations that you know you're going to have to face, or if you just want it for a, a certain thing uh, to complement your character build. I think that's a really cool and neat idea, and I think they implemented it pretty well. I think they could have done a few things better, but I think overall, it was, uh, the robot workbench was done really well. The only other problem I have with it is that a lot of the materials can be or it can cost a lot of materials to build the robots themselves um, so you are gonna need a lot of caps to be able to do everything you want in this game with the robot building that is so overall I think they did a great job with the robot workbench <sighs> so the quest itself is uh, it's not the best honestly um, the first couple of missions are just going around through places you've already seen in the cap in the commonwealth and it's really just a bunch of fetch quests, the first three quests. And then the fourth quest is where it kind of gets meaty, but it's all set in one area. Now, the area is built okay. There's a few th places where you can sneak around or you can do something else. But for the main, po for the main um, portion of it, you really just, every character, no matter what specialized they're in, are just going to be doing the same exact things. Like, there's a few situations where you can sneak around certain enemies, but... Uh, there's you're not gonna find a different way to get through the level if you specialize in lockpick or if you specialized in hacking so uh, Which is one of the things that I used to really like about Fallout New Vegas Fallout 3 There was always a different way to get through the quest if you maybe had a, a, a Character who's better at lockpicking or a character who's better at hacking or a character who's better at speech here. It's not really like that um, There is a speech check at the end, but I won't um, Spoil anything for you 
um, mainly you're just going to be going through the same quest that every other character is doing. So that's, you know, a kind of an issue. Not the biggest issue. Really, my main thing is it's really short, honestly. It's it's a couple of quests. Um, the bulk of the DLC takes place in the last uh, building area of the of the quest line. I'm trying not to spoil anything, so, I, so it's kind of hard to explain it uh, precisely. But um, the, the bulk of the DLC takes place in one area. And... Um, they they provide a lot of robot building stations in that area for you, but you're not going to have the materials there to build the robot that you want. So it's kind of like, why is this here? And they didn't. Pro what they should have provided is is shortcuts out. So basically, once you get to a certain point, there's like, oh look, you can actually exit from this point in the in the level. I think there's one in the entire DLC, uh, or in the entire last area of the game, and it's actually really early on. So. What I mean is, like, let's say you're like, oh, I found this, I found the sentry legs, and I want to put those on my robot. Well, you're halfway through this last area. There's no exit in sight unless you want to backtrack all the way back to the beginning of the area, and then you want to come all the way back through again. It's like I don't want to do that. I, I'm just going to go through it with the robot I have currently. Or you say, oh, I want to actually, you know what? I think my, a melee weapon would be better for this area than a laser weapon. It's like you can't really do a lot of this stuff because there's no a shortcut to the wasteland so that you can fast travel back to home it's where all your materials are you can build this the things you want and stuff like that so um, pretty big issue for me there honestly the final uh, fight which of course there's gonna be a final fight it's actually pretty uh, decently well done it's sort of generic but it's pretty fun as a boss fight there's a lot of unique enemies in this DLC which I enjoyed um, you don't I don't really like there's no enemy in this DLC that you're gonna face that you've already faced previously for the most part, there's going to be like some sentries and robo brains and stuff, but for the most part, it's a lot of new enemies, which I really enjoy. Um, so that's really going to wrap up my thoughts on the DLC. As a whole, I thought it was a fun. I thought it was a decent opening. I think it, it ranks on the in the middle area of the DLCs for the Fallout universe as a whole. Um, it had a lot of good to it with the robot workbench and with the new enemy varieties and the couple of weapons it added were pretty nice, but not all of them. And the, you know, a lot of that stuff was good. However, it was, in my opinion, almost evenly outweighed by the, or, you know, evenly negative by the fact that uh, it was still set in the Commonwealth. And it didn't really add too many areas to the game. And it's kind of short. And it's all set in one area. So it's or most of the DLC is set in one area, so it's kind of a disappointment there. I still think overall it was a net positive. Um, I hate giving ratings because I think they're silly and people only look at the rating of a review and not what the person actually has to say. If I had to give this a rating, I'd say it was probably a 6.5 or 7 out of 10. I think it's really good, but I think it could have been much better than it was. Um, I don't know why they went some of the lazy routes they went. I don't know if they spent all their time crafting a great workbench and not crafting a new area that you could go to or not uh, building a new place that you could go to so you could actually have a cool new experience. So I think that's a little disappointing. But overall, I think it was a pretty decent entry into the Fallout DLC. Um, certainly not as bad as as Mothership Zeta or Operation, Operation Anchorage or... Um, what was the other shit DLC in Fallout 3? I don't even remember. Point Lookout was very good. But yeah, certainly not as bad as those two DLCs. So, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been my review of Fallout 4 Automatron, spoiler free. I'm going to be doing an in-depth review of it later on where I can really get into the spoilers of it and show you my robot um, in-depth and stuff like that. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye.